This sermon is titled Signs and Wonders. Be enriched as you listen. The last Sunday of the month is usually our supernatural Sunday. Uh, we take time just to bring a very simple word of encouragement and then pray together, believe God to do supernatural things in our lives. And I want you this morning to be expected to say, God, I want you to do something supernatural in my life or in the lives of people that you care about, that, that who are around you, uh, that you know they have a need. Let's extend our faith and expect God to do supernatural things. This morning, I just want to encourage us to, to open our hearts and minds and to be expectant for signs and wonders. So that's the title of the message, simply signs and wonders. You know, if you think about it, we are living about 2,000 years post New Testament times. 2,000 years have gone. And so, you know, so much has happened. We have developed, I'm talking about people in general, like humanity in general, we've developed uh, technology, science, medicine, all has advanced so much over this 2,000 year period. And so many times when we read the scriptures and we l read about God doing miraculous things, God doing supernatural things, there seems to be this disconnect. A disconnect of time and a disconnect of the world in which, or the worlds in which we live in. The disconnect from Bible times to where we are today. Now there's nothing wrong with technology and science and medicine. These are good things. We need to use them well, use them for our advantage, you know, derive the benefits, put it to good use, and so on. There's been not against that. But what I'm going to encourage us this morning is to reconnect with the God of the Bible. And not to modernize our God, the God of the Bible, so as to take out all the supernatural aspects of who God is. The God of the Bible is still the God of today. Amen? He's still the same. The God of the Bible is the God of today. Times have changed. The worlds in which we live is very different. The world in which we live in is very different from the times of the Bible. But the God of the Bible is still the God of today. And we must expect for God to work in our lives the way he did in Bible times. The way he did in the Gospels, through the life and the ministry of Jesus, in the early church, uh, how he worked. We must expect that. We shouldn't rule that out and say, well, we've got science, we've got technology, we've got medicine, we've got all these good things, so God, we'll take care of ourselves, just show up on Sundays and bless us a little bit. That's not the God that we're looking for. We're looking for the God of the Bible to be God in our lives. Amen? And so I just want to encourage us and help us be in that position, that's, that place where we can expect signs and wonders every day of the week. Not just, you know, on Supernatural Sunday. We call it Supernatural Sunday because we want to keep reminding us of the supernatural. But God works every day of the week. And we must be open to that. And he works through you and me. And we must be open to that. Amen? So... What we're going to do today is very simple. We're just going to you know, uh, journey through two chapters in the book of Acts. We'll start out in Acts chapter 4 and then just spend our time in Acts chapter 5. So in Acts chapter 4, we see that the, the, the after effects of the healing of this lame man who'd been lame for more than 40 years. He'd, he'd been born crippled from birth. He's been in that condition for more than 40 years and God does a supernatural work, heals this man and then there are repercussions. The religious people are against the church. They're, they're persecuting the church. And so they, they, they threaten the apostles saying you must not preach and teach in the name of Jesus. Uh, you know, so there are threats coming in, there's opposition and so on. What does the church do? So let's pick up in Acts chapter 4. In the middle of their prayer, the apostles go back to the, the company of disciples. They are praying. And we're just picking up on a little part of that prayer. In Acts chapter 4, verses 29 to 31. This is what they pray. Now, Lord, look at their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word. 
by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus and when they had prayed the place where they were assembled together was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God with boldness so what was their prayer their prayer was God just help us be bold there are threats coming against us. There's opposition. There's persecution. But God grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word. We just want to be bold. And we just want to keep speaking what we have been speaking. Now, you know, just imagine this. The early church didn't have a Bible. I mean, they had the Old Testament. But they didn't have the Bible as you and I have it. You know, everyone probably has a Bible either on their lap or on their phone. You know, you've got a Bible. And many of us have multiple copies of the Bible. The early church didn't have all of that. And all they were going by was the word of the apostles. The apostles would tell them, Jesus did this. Jesus taught us that. And this is what the Old Testament says. And Jesus is a fulfillment of that. They had the Old Testament. They had the life and the teachings of Jesus. And that was what they were living on. So you go to church, you don't have a Bible, you're just living off of what the apostles are telling you. And what is the church praying? God, we want to be bold and we want to keep preaching this boldly. Give us all boldness and with all boldness we may preach your word. We're going to keep saying what Jesus said, we're going to keep uh, declaring what he did and we're going to keep doing what he commanded us to do. Give us boldness. Amen? And so the Bible says they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God with boldness. They had great boldness. They asked for great boldness. And so they were in a place, in a position of great boldness. And I want to encourage you and me. Let's stay in that place of great boldness and let's keep preaching God's word. We're not going to change that. We're not going to compromise on what we're going to preach and teach. It's the word of God. We're going to preach and teach. Times have changed. There may be persecution. There may be opposition. But we're going to stay in a place of great boldness and keep preaching God's word. Amen? And what else, what else did they ask? They said, God, we want to be in a place of great boldness. We want to be in a place where we are preaching the word. But here, God, this is what we want you to do. We want you, God, to stretch out your hand. And you heal. And you do signs and wonders in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen? And here's good news. God hasn't changed, and the name of Jesus has not lost any of its power. Amen. 2,000 years have gone, but the God of the Bible is the God of today. And the name of Jesus is as powerful as it was in Bible times. It hasn't changed. What has changed is you and me. We need to reconnect. We need to reestablish that the God we believe in, that the God of the Bible is a God of today, and we want to expect God to move in our lives, in our life situations, heal us, deliver us, do wonderful things. God grants signs and wonders to be done. Amen? This past week, I was in Ranchi for most of the part of the week, actually, uh, I went to Ranchi from there to another place, another small town, and spent time there just ministering to and it was just an amazing, uh, it was just amazing to witness what has happened. You know, uh, the, the work started back in the 80s, 90s. A little bit of history, I don't want to go into the details. But uh, the, the, the pastor couple who started the work, they were trained in a Bible college for two months. That's all the training they had, two months training. They went back there, they started the work. And then today, uh, of course, they started the work in the town, Many churches have come and tribals around the, in, in the state of Jharkhand have come to Christ. And so I was in this auditorium. You've got people from the city and you've got tribals there. Uh, everybody's sitting in the same auditorium. And the common testimony over and over again is, this person got healed. He comes from a non-Christian background. He got saved. This person comes from a non-Christian background. He was sick on a bed. He got healed. He's come to faith in Christ. That's the common story. God is still working signs and wonders and people are coming to the Lord. Nobody can stop it. 
Because the God of the Bible is still the God of today. The name of Jesus has not lost any of its power. Amen? It was just so amazing. And, and it, it is so much more touching for me because I knew the history. I, I knew what had happened in the 80s and the 90s here. And, and sort of so touching for me because I knew the person who was running that Bible college. You know, he, he started of a two-month Bible college and then it became a three-month Bible college. That was all. People came from all over North and they were trained for three months and they went back. And what an amazing work has, has happened. There are gener succeeding generations that have been affected, including the tribal areas in that region. And so I was so touched being there, serving those people. Amen? God is at work in our nation. Nobody can stop it. The fire is spreading. The work is increasing. Amen? Because the God of the Bible is the God of today. And the name of Jesus has not lost any of its power. Amen? So this is what the early church prayed. Oh God, stretch out your hand to heal. Let signs and wonders be done in the name of your holy servant Jesus. And I want to encourage each of us to pray like that. To pray for signs and wonders. To ask God to intervene. Maybe in your own life situation, the life situation of people around you. People that you know about. So that they can encounter in reality the God of the Bible. Amen? Now, let's see what happened. So they prayed for great boldness. They said, God, we will commit ourselves to boldly preach the word. You do your part. What happened? Let's follow along. Acts 4, verse 33. It records this. And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. So God is answering their prayer. What's happening now? They're experiencing great power and they're experiencing great grace. Great power, great grace in the church. Amen? We want to be a church like that. Amen? Great, great, great power and great grace. We have great music. We've got great all the other things, which is good. I'm not saying we shouldn't have all that. All that is good. But we need to have great power and great grace. Great power, great grace. And that's how they were giving witness. They were testifying to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. A church full of great power and great grace. God was answering their prayer. And may that happen even amongst us. Amen. May we be a church. May we, there is great power and there is great grace. Amen. Let's lift, our, lift your right hand up and say, Oh God, make us a church of great power and great grace. One more time. Oh God. Make us a church of great power and great grace in Jesus' name. So that's how they were giving testimony to the resurrection of Jesus. Now what happened consequently? Acts chapter 5. We're going to look at a few incidents in Acts chapter 5. What happened? And I'm not bringing our attention to these things so that, you know, trying to tell us that these things will be replicated. We're not here to copy exactly but be open because God will work as he pleases but we need to be open we need to know what God has done and how he might work in our day and time the first thing we see in Acts 5 is that two people drop dead in church because of lying they lied to the Holy Spirit and on eyes and Sapphira they they pretended that, you know, they, they had sold their land, they bought the money, they pretended that they would bring the entire money uh, to give into the church, and they dropped dead. I don't know if you've wondered, but I've wondered, and I'm sure many of us would have, say, Lord, there was great power, there was great grace, but why such a severe outcome for something so small at least they brought a portion of their offering why such a severe outcome drop dead just for keeping back a part 
of what they were supposed to have brought. Why? Especially when there is great grace. A church, great power, great grace. The apostles are in a place of great boldness. And why, are people, why, why did these two people just drop that? Doesn't compute. Because our mind thinks that when there is great grace, God just will overlook sin. But this teaches us something contrary. So we need to change our thinking. And here's what I want you to consider. That where there is great power, and where there is great grace, there is also low tolerance for sin. It goes against our thinking. But this is what you see here. Where there is great power, where there is great grace, there is low tolerance for sin. So we got to be careful what we're asking God for. God make us a church of great power and great grace. We are saying, God, we understand when there is great grace, there is no tolerance for sin. Now, why is that? Because grace is not a license to sin, but grace is an empowering over sin. That's by Bible grace. And to whom much is given, much is required. If God's given you much grace, he's going to ask a lot from you. So when you're in an environment, you're in an atmosphere where there is great power and there's great grace and great glory of God, just remember a much is expected of you and me. Because too much is given, much is required. So when God gives great grace, he's expecting us to walk in that grace, not to waste that grace, not to treat that grace lightly. Are you understanding? So in an environment where there was great power and great grace, there was low tolerance for sin. And when the church saw it, something happened. Acts 5 and verse 11 says this. So let's read it together. So great fear came upon all the church and upon all who heard these things. So what happened? The church came into a place of great fear. Now when we say fear, we're not talking about the morbid kind of fear. We're talking about an holy reverence for God. A sudden recognition that this God who's moving amongst us is a holy God. He's an awesome God. You don't play around with this God. So what do we see now? We see a church that is in a place of great boldness, but also in a place of great reverence. And this church is now experiencing great power and great grace. Amen? So we, as a community, as a church, as a body of believers, as people who love Jesus, who are here, are walking this earth for the sake of the kingdom. We're saying, God, make us a church of great power. Make us a church of great grace. But God, we understand we've got to position ourselves in a place of great boldness and in a place of great reverence for God. We're not playing around with God. Great fear or great reverence for God. Amen? And then... The work is continuing. What do we see? Acts chapter 5. What else happens here? Verses 12 through 16. They have prayed and said, God, stretch out your hand to heal, grant signs and wonders to be done. Here's what's happening. And through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. Yet none of the rest dared join them, but the people esteemed them highly. 
and believers were increasingly added to the Lord. Multitudes of both men and women. So that they brought the sick out into the streets and laid them on beds and couches. That at least the shadow of Peter passing by might fall on some of them. Also a multitude gathered from the surrounding cities to Jerusalem. Bringing sick people and those who were tormented by unclean spirits. And they were all healed. Let's highlight a few things here. Once again, we understand the times in which we are living. We've got all these great advancements in science and medicine and technology. And these are good things. And you know, our normal response if you fall sick is like, okay, go to, go to the hospital, you know, get some medicine. And I'm not against it. We've got lots of doctors here and, and, and you know, and we work with hospitals, ministers, and all of that. So this is, this is a good thing. I'm not against it. We, we make use of it. But what we are seeing here is that God is healing these sick people. And God is delivering people who are tormented and oppressed by unclean spirits. And that God has not stopped doing that. Perhaps our expectation has changed. Perhaps how we respond to disease or how we respond to demonic works has changed. But God hasn't changed. He's still the God who heals. He's still the God who delivers people. Now, you know, we city people, we kind of, we, for us, demonic manifestations tends to be a little strange. What is that? Well, but, you know, you need to see it. and you'll, It'll make you, uh, quickly make you a believer. All your theological questions will go when you see somebody manifesting. Because psychology and psychiatry cannot explain that. But it's happening right before your eyes. And that person gets delivered in the mighty name of Jesus. He can't explain it, but it's happening. All right, so for our city people, it's like, you know, what is that unclean spirit and demonic man of it? Just, just come on a mission trip, you know. You'll see. But the God of the Bible was healing the sick and delivering people. And even in our day, even in our time, these things are needed. In as much as we've got the advancements in medicine and so on, but these things are needed. There are things that medicine cannot cure and there are things that psychiatry cannot handle and that's where you and I must look to the God of heaven and say, God, we need you here. If you don't do something, nothing can be done. Your only hope. Amen. And God was doing it in the church. And may the Lord do it again through his church today. Because the God of the Bible has not changed. The name of Jesus has not changed. May God do it over and over and over again in our midst. So imagine a church where multitudes are coming. They're bringing their disease. They're bringing their oppressed. They're tormented. They're coming to the church. And God is healing. He's doing mighty signs and wonders. The other thing I want to bring to our attention is that God is doing something in Acts 5, that in the passage we just read, that has no precedent. Now if you were a Bible college student there, next to Peter, say, Peter, I want to ask you a question. Show me in the Bible where anybody's shadow healed anybody. The only Bible they had in those days was the Old Testament. Peter, with that little knowledge he had, would try to look for a chapter and verse. And he says, boy, there is no place in the Old Testament where anybody's shadow healed anybody. So you and I would say, Peter, you are in error. Your shadow is healing people. No, Peter was not in error. The Bible says, Psalm 115, 16, God is in the heavens and he does as he pleases. He's just doing what he wants. He just decided that he's going to use Peter's shadow to heal the Bible, uh, heal the sick, sorry, <laughs> to heal the sick. And yes, there is no precedent to that in the Bible, but that's okay. God's the one who wrote the Bible, 
and he wants to write something new. What's the point? The point is, when God works signs and wonders in our day and time, he's completely free to do something you don't find in the Bible. Because God doesn't sit inside our box. Are you listening? He's fine. He wants to do something new. If he wants to do a miracle through your laptop, so be it. There were no laptops in the Old Testament or the New Testament. If God wants to work through your mobile phone or pray through the mobile phone, so be it. Don't go and say, show me in the Bible where you can pray through the mobile phone. Come on. Amen? So God, when he works signs and wonders in our day and time, just be open. He will do new things. He will do unusual things. Just be open to the way God wants to work and let God be God. God is in the heaven and he does as he pleases. And we just say, okay, God, you're doing something unusual. You're doing something different. I'm ready to receive it. We are ready to receive it. But the real test of every sign and wonder is found right there in that same passage. What was the outcome of those signs and wonders and Peter's shadow healing people? It says, and the multitudes, great multitudes, were added to the Lord. So that's a real test. What is the outcome of, this unusual, of these unusual things happening? What is the outcome of these signs and wonders? Is it just giving glory to man? Is it just drawing people into some organization or denomination? Or is it people pointing people to the Lord Jesus Christ, causing them to fall in love with Jesus, causing them to give their lives to Christ? That's the sign, and that's exactly what's happening right here. That Peter's shadow healing people, the signs, the wonders, and miracles happening caused great multitudes to believe. In Jesus. That's the test. That's the test. So even today, God is God. He's going to move in unusual ways. He's going to do as he pleases. He's going to work new and wonderful things. He's going to work signs and wonders as we pray like the early church. The test is, are these things bringing people to Jesus? Are they drawing people to the risen Christ? Are they, ca are they causing them to become committed followers of Jesus? That's the test. Then we know it's a sign and a wonder that comes from the name of Jesus, that comes from the living God. Amen? And so let's expect the same. That as God works in unusual ways, that people will be brought to faith in Jesus. What else do we see in Acts 5? Acts 5, 17 through 20. It says, The high priest rose up and all those who were with them, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and they were filled with indignation. They laid a hand on the apostles, put them in the common prison. But at night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, Go stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. What else are we seeing happen in Acts 5? They prayed, God, you stretch out your hand to heal. You do signs and wonders. What is God doing? We see angels bringing deliverance. Amen? Now we read about angels in the Bible. But I think sometimes us New Testament believers, we function in a way where we think, you know, all the angels have gone into retirement. Something happened. They're no longer there. They took early retirement. You know. But the Bible says, Hebrews 1.14, that the angels of God are ministering spirits sent forth to minister to those who are the heirs of salvation. You are an heir of salvation. You are a child of the living God. And angels are here to minister for you and to you. So just expect. Ask God. We need more angels now than they did in Bible times. There's no traffic those days. We need more safety. We need more deliverance. We need those angels serving us. Amen? So expect. There's nothing wrong saying, God, send your angels before me. God, let angels stand God before me. Because the Bible says the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. 
he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. And they will bear you up in their hands lest you dash your foot against a stone. That's the word of God. So angels were operating then. And we as a church, as God's people, can believe, can expect angels to minister deliverance. Angels to minister the supernatural to us in our lives. So ask God for it. The angels, they respond listening to the voice of God's word. So you speak God's word. Let the angels know that you're siding in with the word of God and they're free to operate in your life. Amen? My last thing. Acts 5. What else do we see? Verse 32. This is how the apostles responded when they were questioned. They said, We are his witnesses to these things. And so also is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. So they were questioned one more time. So how come you're doing all these things? What's happening? And their response is this. We are his witnesses. And so also is the Holy Spirit. Whom God has given to those who obey him. What I want to just bring to our attention is this. When you and I stand committed to a place of ministry, of speaking God's word with great boldness, of declaring Jesus with great boldness. And when you and I are committed to being in that place of great reverence before God, and we are praying, God, stretch out your hand to heal. And God, you do signs and wonders. Let there be great power. Let there be great grace amongst us, Lord. You do mighty things. I want you and me to understand that when we are in that place, it's we and the Holy Spirit with us giving witness to Jesus Christ. You're not doing this on your own. When you're out there, maybe in your place of work, maybe in your community, in your neighborhood, wherever you are, and you have an opportunity to speak to somebody about Jesus, maybe a friend, a family member, somebody known to you, you have an opportunity to share Jesus with them, and you say, can I pray for you? Maybe they are going through some trouble. Maybe there's a difficult situation in their life. Maybe they need healing. Maybe they need deliverance. Can you say, can I pray for you? Because in your heart, you're saying, God, you stretch out your hand to heal. Let signs and wonders be done in the name of the Lord Jesus. When you're about to do that, remember, it's not just you alone but it's you and the Holy Spirit with you amen it's a nice place to say amen <laughs> it's like I, I preach and it's like I'm waiting for a response it's like <laughs> okay alright it's good to say amen so remember it's not you alone it's you and the Holy Spirit. So you do your part. Say, God, I can pray. I can share Jesus. I'll be bold about it. I will do it in reverence. But God, only you can demonstrate the power and extend grace. And the Holy Spirit is with me. The Holy Spirit is with you when you bear witness to Jesus Christ. When you are serving the Lord and when you're praying for somebody, you're sharing Jesus with somebody and you're expecting God to work a sign, to do a sign and a wonder, to stretch out his hand, to do something wonderful in their life. You're expecting God. Don't put it all on you. Don't take the pressure on yourself. It's not on you. The Holy Spirit is with you. You just do your part. Just relax. Just do your part. Say what you know. So I don't know Hebrew and Greek. He doesn't need Hebrew and Greek. Just speak in simple English. Tell what you know about Jesus. Tell what you know what Jesus can do for them. Tell, tell, just tell them in simple, plain English who Jesus is. And let the Holy Spirit bear the witness. Because we and the Holy Spirit are witnesses together. Amen? Worship team, please come. I just want to address another point before we get into a little bit of worship and prayer. You see, a question that would come to us, especially church in, in modern times, is, is it right to ask God for signs and wonders? 
I mean, we are in a postmodern world, so why this emphasis on signs and wonders? Why do you have the last Sunday of every month, Supernatural Sunday? Can't we not just have normal Sunday? <laughs> why are you talking about signs and wonders and us praying for miracles and healings and deliverance? I mean, is it right? And then, of course, we go to the Bible. And I want you to consider this. And you look at the ministry of Jesus. That there was this group of people, primarily the religious leaders of his time, who came to Jesus challenging him. And they said, what sign will you give us? What sign will you give us? In other words, prove to us. Give us a sign to prove that you're the Messiah. Give us a sign. What sign will you give us? To that group, Jesus said, I will give you no sign except that of Jonah. Even as Jonah was in the belly of the great fish, so the Son of Man must be crucified for three days, three nights, and he will rise up. In other words, to that group who came questioning, challenging, doubting, they came to trap him. To them he said, look, I'm not going to give you any sign other than my own death and resurrection. That's the sign you need to look at. But there were great multitudes who came. They also came for signs and wonders. They came for miracles. But they came. Some of them already believing, some of them wanting to believe. And they came for a sign and a wonder because they had a need. And not one of them did Jesus turn away. Just as a case in point, you look at the nobleman from Capernaum in John chapter 4. He comes to Jesus and he says, Lord, my son is really sick. Jesus recognizes where he was. And Jesus says, unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. And there are people right there today. They are kind of open to Jesus. We would call them seekers. They are ready. They, they want to believe. But they are waiting to see a sign and a wonder. Just like this man. Jesus said, unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. He didn't send him away. What did he do for the noble man and like the noble man to many others? He said, go home. Your son lives. What was the outcome? What was the result? The Bible says as he went home, he got news. His son was healed that same moment that Jesus spoke the words. And the Bible says he and his entire household believed. What's the point? The point is, there are many people who are just waiting to believe in Jesus. Their hearts are ready. They just need to cross the line. They need to see a sign and wonder. And God's ready to do it for them. He's waiting for you and me to be the agents who will come into the lives of such people and minister. He's waiting for you and me to help these people and come to the God of the Bible. Help these people experience the reality and the power of the name of Jesus. Whether it's in a healing, whether it's in a deliverance or some other miracle that, that they see, that they encounter. And like this noble man, they and their household will believe. The question is, are you willing to be God's agent in this world today? Are you willing to say, God, stretch out your hand to heal and grant that signs and wonders will be done in the name of your holy child, Jesus, but grant to me that with great boldness, I will speak your word. I will be unashamed. I will tell people about Jesus and I will pray for them. I will expect signs and wonders for them to happen for them. And God, through me, may they cross the line. They and their household, may they cross the line. Are you ready? Are you willing to be that agent of God in this hour, in this day? I want to encourage you. It's still happening. It's still happening. 
It's happening in our nation. Amen. Multitudes are coming to the faith in Jesus Christ because they are seeing a sign and a wonder and they can't question it. Because they are seeing God, the God of the Bible, be the God of today. Because they are seeing the power of the name of Jesus and they're coming to faith. And you can be one of those people who help somebody else cross the line just because you say, God, give me great boldness that I may speak your word boldly. Amen? Let's rise to our feet, please. I want us to just pray however this word, however this message is ministered to you. Please take some time to engage with God. Those of you watching online, wherever you are, you engage with God right where you are. And as we worship and right up during the time of worship, I want you to engage with God. Maybe you need a sign and a wonder. Maybe you need a miracle in your life, in your circumstance, your situation. It may be a physical healing, maybe uh, uh, something that you need to be set free from. Or maybe you know somebody that you care about who needs that. Pray. It's okay. Perfectly fine to ask God for supernatural works. Perfectly fine. The God of the Bible is the God of today. He still works signs and wonders. The name of Jesus is still as powerful. Let the Lord do His work. We're going to just connect with God as we worship. Receive, receive. Lord, even as we sing, let there be healings, let there be miracles taking place in this place, Father, as well as those who are watching online, wherever they are. Stretch out your hand to heal, Father. Stretch out your hand to deliver. In the name of your Son, Jesus, let mighty things take place. As we are worshiping, if you experience a healing, I want you to just leave your seat and come forward to testify. But as we are worshiping, we're going to be singing in a minute from now. As we are singing and you're connecting with God, as the God of heaven stretches out us, His hand to heal, to deliver, to do something. And if you can verify it, and we are not saying be hasty, be emotional. Some things need to be verified by the doctor. So please go to the hospital, get it verified and then testify. But if there's something that happens to you right here, right now, which you can verify, which you can say, I know I've been healed. I know I've been delivered. Then you come forward to testify, right? So we don't want to do this in a, out of emotion. We don't want to do this, you know, uh, we want to do this in a, in a right way, in a proper way. But as we worship, if something happens, feel free to come forward to testify. And also, what you need may not necessarily be a physical healing or an emotional healing. Maybe it's a, it's a thing that needs to happen in your life situation and a circumstance you're facing. Uh, in, a, in a situation that you're confronted with, may the Lord God work miracles even in your life situation. He can turn things around. So expect that. Expect that as we sing, please. And I'll come back right after this.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We're going to take a few moments to pray. If you experience God touching you, doing something here right now, feel free to come forward and take a moment to share what God does, what the Lord Jesus does. There's no pressure, but we just want to make sure we give glory to God and just build up faith, encourage the faith of the people. Those of you online, if something's happening to you right where you are, type it out in the chat. Our moderators are there. Uh, they will record that. So just feel free to share what the Lord is doing. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Father, in Jesus' name, even as we heard your word, you're still the God of the Bible, the God of today. You're still the God who stretches out his hand to heal, to deliver, to work miracles. So in the mighty name of Jesus, let healings take place right here in this auditorium. Let healings take place where people are watching. In the name of Jesus, let sicknesses, diseases be removed from our bodies by the power of the Holy Spirit and in the mighty name of Jesus. I command every yoke of sickness, every yoke of disease to be broken in Jesus' name. Satan, I take authority over you in the mighty name of Jesus. I come against every foul, wicked spirit that is off you and I command it to leave. Every spirit of infirmity, I command you to leave. Every spirit of oppression tormenting the minds of people, every spirit of addiction, every foul, unclean spirit holding people in bondage, I command you to leave. Every chain is broken in the mighty name of Jesus. Sickness and disease is healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Oppressions and torments lives in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, thank you for doing your work of healing. We thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I'm going to take a moment. Anybody you experience something right here, right now, that you can verify? You want to come forward and quickly testify right now? Anyone here? Something happened to you right here, right now. You want to come forward and testify? Anyone? Okay. What we like to do before we close is to give people an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and as their Savior. Maybe a friend invited you. Maybe you just happened to come in here. The greatest thing that can happen to you and me is for us to receive Jesus into our lives. To say, Jesus, come into my life. Be my God, be my Savior, be my Lord. And I want to follow you the rest of my life. If you feel prompted in your heart this morning to make that decision, and if you've never made that decision before in your life, I'm going to lead us in a simple prayer. And if you've never done this before, but this morning you feel, I want to believe in this Jesus. I want to follow this Jesus in my life. And you're making that decision of your own choice. Nobody is compelling you. I'm just giving you an invitation. I'm just going to lead you in a prayer. And if you feel prompted to do that, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Just say this with me. If you've never done this before, Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my life. Forgive my sins and help me to follow you. And you alone the rest of my life. Make me a child of God and make me a witness for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.
If you pray this prayer with me for the very first time, we want to celebrate with you. So if you don't mind, could you raise your hand up, please? If you pray this for anyone here in this auditorium, you pray this prayer with me for the very first time. Anyone here? Can you just wave your hand at me? Anyone here? You pray this prayer with me for the very first time? Anyone? Okay. I don't see any hands. Anybody? Last time? You pray this prayer with me this morning? Okay. I don't see any hands. In case you did and you feel shy, our greeters are around here everywhere in this auditorium. They have a bag with them. It's called the New Believers Bag. So if you pray that prayer, we want to make sure you get this bag with, with you before you leave. There's also a card that says decision card. If you could kindly write your name and number, give it back to them. Take this bag with you and we will call you and tell you how to use the resources that are in this bag. We're going to close uh, there are pastors, life group leaders who are here. I want to just invite you to come forward to pray for the people who might need personal prayer. So if you'd like to be here, pastors, life group leaders, if you'd like to be here to pray for people, you're welcome to do that. Those of you who need personal prayer, our pastors and life group leaders will be here to pray with you, those, of those, those who are available. So please make use of that. Let's close. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with each of us always, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening. We trust this message was a blessing to you. For more free resources, including sermons, sermon notes, and books, please visit apcwo.org. For information on APC Bible College in Bangalore, visit apcbiblecollege.org. Do remember to download the All People's Church Bangalore app from the Apple or Google Play Store.